Hello, welcome back to my channel, Mel Stampin' Gallery. I'm Melanie, your Close to My Heart Maker. And for today's layout, I wanted to use this new um, featured paper pack from Close to My Heart called The Good Life. And you can see that in the current seasonal catalog here on page six and seven. Um, they've got the paper pack here. We've got the coordinating stickers as well as these uh, wood look die cuts. And of course, there is the digital art collection here as well, and the coordinating card stock. And on the next page, you have the Good Life card making stamp set, and you also have the Good Life scrapbooking stamp and thin cuts. So what I wanted to do today was use this paper pack and the sticker sheet to help me document these old photos that I have of my dad back on his grandparents farm. Um, let's see, he was born in 1931 and this looks like he's not very old there. He's probably less than 10 years old. So this is probably somewhere between 1931 and 1941. I'm gonna say maybe about 1936 or 7 maybe. Anyway, um, I just thought they were perfect for this paper pack and then there's the old barn that was behind the house and this was actually their family house and my grandmother um, was born in that house so I thought this paper pack was perfect to help me document these pictures so I'm going to go ahead and clear this out of the way and bring in my Versamat and get started to get started I've gone ahead like I said and I've brought in my Versamat and I've got a piece of 12 by 12 um, French vanilla cardstock um, I usually do the white daisy, but because of the um, vintage feel of these photos, I wanted to use the French vanilla. So, and they're all four by six, which kind of makes for hard placement, but I think they're going to go kind of something like this. Um, I wanted this one kind of looking into the photo for sure. These two kind of had the same look to them, so that's why I was putting them together. And then I think I'm going to put this one of the barn kind of over top here, um, kind of overlapping those pictures. And then that'll give me um, some nooks and crannies to build my embellishment clusters. But what I want to do is I love this piece of paper and I really want to use it on here, but I think that that's going to be just too busy. So I'm thinking Maybe if I use just part of it and cut that down about like that maybe, that might work and then have this side be the French vanilla. Now I went ahead and I cut this piece down to six and a half, left it at 12 inches, and that's going to go on the left hand side over here. And I'll put my photos back in place about where I want them. I just kind of dry fit everything together before I start adhering down. That way if I uh, don't like something I can change it and then sometimes I even come back the next day. I walk away and think, hmm, not sure. <laughs> Let's walk away and come back. So anyway, I've got that down. I kind of like what that's doing. Now I've got the zip strips from a couple of the pieces. Uh, look at that. Are the trucks not perfect? I mean, there's no truck in this picture, but can't you just see them um, riding in their truck? <laughs> kind of like the Grapes of Wrath, right? So I've got that little truck. Uh, we've got, this was a zip strip from one of the pieces as well. I like how it brings in that harbor. And then the fences in the middle here. I think that's where I'm gonna put them. So those are gonna go along the top. And I should say, I went ahead and I did mount the photos in um, Harbor cardstock, because that's one of the coordinating colors. And then on the sticker sheet, there was this title, Heart and Home. I thought that was perfect. So I think that's gonna go down here in this empty spot to put the title. So that's now I've got the papers down where I want them. I haven't put the pictures down yet, or the title. Um, but did you see what I did here on the uh, title it's got this bracket and it had these holes and I don't like naked holes so I actually had um, some of these um, they're not called oh eyelets right or rivets eyelets I guess we used to call them back in the day and I used my old crocodile 
to put those in there. So I think before I lay those down, I think I want to go ahead and just sponge the very edges of the cardstock with the toffee. Uh, just because it kind of will, instead of doing a frame layout like I do sometimes, this will kind of give it a natural frame. So I'm just going to use my coffee and a round sponge brush here. Let's lift those off and then lift this up from the Versamat. And then just go around and sponge the edges and that will kind of just finish it off. And while I'm doing that, I want to make sure to let you know, to remind you that all supplies that I use will be listed down below in the description box. Anything I have um, that is currently available from close to my heart will be listed down there. Um, so be sure and check out that description box. And in that description box is also where you can find links to my social media pages like Facebook and Instagram. And also, if you do like this layout and you like my artwork, please don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and to like and share the video with your friends. Um, that helps me out here on my channel to grow and it also helps you as well because it lets YouTube know that you like these kind of videos and YouTube then will continue to put these kind of videos in your feed so you can watch them. So one other thing too, and if you do like the um, if you do like the supplies from close to the close to my heart, then consider being a VIP, and I will have those links down for you below as well. Now the VIP simply means that you are a very important person, of course, and you like to shop with close to my heart and you'll be rewarded with 15% cash back bonuses that you can use on um, future purchases. So it's like getting paid to shop. And all those links will be listed down below in the description box, so don't forget to check those out. So I decided, like I said, I don't like leaving those holes there, so I found some ribbon in my stash to put through those holes, and I'm just going to wrap it around the back. And let's see if I can gently lift up because I have put this down. Take my spatula here from Cricut and lift that up. And then that, I can just put those ends in there, under there. And then I'll just take a little piece here and just slide it under there to make it look like it's coming all the way around. Now that I've got that done, it's time to start playing with some embellishments. And I had this old stitch circle in my stash. So I think I'm going to slip that under there, kind of make a grounding for my cluster. And then I actually took the sticker from the sticker sheet and I cut off the extra because I didn't want that big rectangle. And I think I'm going to put that, and I took the sticky off too so I can play with it and move it around. I'm going to put that there and I think I'll put I had this in my stash, a piece of wood grain paper that I made. Let's try that right there. Now these sayings from the sticker sheet were perfect. I mean, homegrown happiness, perfect. The good life. <laughs> Maybe they didn't think it was such a good life then, but I'll bet you my dad would tell you that he definitely missed those days. I think he really enjoyed being a young boy playing on the farm. <laughs> In fact, I was just talking to my mom about it, trying to remember some stories. And I know she said that that was the farm, and he was on the horse, probably about, like I said, maybe about eight years old. And my grandpa, or his grandpa, so my great-grandpa, was actually on the, um, what do you call it, I think, the plow behind him. Um, he was the one driving the plow, and Dad was riding the horse and playing around. So... So these stickers, I thought, were absolutely perfect for this paper. We've got that barn. We've got all these farm things. Let's stick some of these flags here. Got this little one here like that. And then we've got a couple more sayings. And again, this little milk jug. I didn't want the whole sticker. I just wanted that. And then how about the saying that says, keep it simple. All right. So we're going to play with that. 
And I want to think about my journaling. I'm not quite sure what I want to say, but I'm thinking somehow it's going to go here. I'm not sure if I'll put it on a clear label yet or strips. I'm not really sure yet. And then up here, I think I might write the title and maybe the place. I did go ahead and type my journaling just on some white cardstock and uh, cut the strips apart because it was looking like too solid of a line. So I'm going to put it right about here and I will space that out a little bit. But then I thought I really like this windmill that was in the background and we do have that in digital art. So what I did first was I changed it to a print and cut because I didn't want to cut out all those little pieces. Plus I made it smaller than the way it came into design space. And I think I'm gonna put that right there. But I didn't like how new that looked compared to everything else. It's kind of sticking out too much. So I kind of grunged it up a little bit. So it looks more like this and it kind of fits in with the photos. And I think I'll place that right about there. Now, um, in case you're wondering how I grunged that up, I'm going to um, show you what I did. All right, so I have an all-purpose mat here. I've got my print and cut image, and I have just an old sea sponge that I got at, I think, Hobby Lobby. And I've got these um, Tim Holtz Distress Stains in Vintage Photo and Broken China. And all I did, these stains have a spongy top on them and you can just put it on your um, all-purpose mat and it pools up like that. And then you can just grab your sea sponge and I just dab it in there. And I just start dabbing on the paper. Just kind of all over. It's kind of give it that rust look. And if you need more, just put a little bit more on there. And I really wanted to kind of cover up the red because I don't have any other red in my picture. Okay, and then I took some of the broken china and that kind of gave it the gray harbor look. And again, taking that same sea sponge and going over the blades on the windmill. Now, the thing about doing this kind of techniques, you could do this, I could do this five different times and I would get five different looks. Like right now, it looks like it's kind of turning a little greener. And that's okay, just so I had that toned down a little bit. So you can just keep playing with the ink until you get it looking the way you want it. And then I wanted to grunge it up even a little bit more. So I'm taking some more of the, uh, what's this, Vintage Photo. And I'm taking the splatter stamp from our um, current background, uh, excuse me, the current background element stamp set that is in the um, catalog. And I'm not even putting it on a block. I'm just picking up picking it up from the all-purpose mat with my hand, just getting that kind of organic look. And so when that dries, that will look all real nice and grungy. All right, so let me bring the finished layout back in so you can see that. And you see this is the original uh, windmill that I did, and here's the one that I did for you as a demonstration. You, but you can see how different they look. So like I said, each time you do it, you are going to get a different look. So let me go over what we have here. Like I said, um, all the products that I used here were the Good Life paper collection and sticker sheet, and then just this one SVG, uh, <coughs> excuse me, from the um, SVG cuts from Digital Art File. But if you don't have the Digital Art File, you can of course use the uh, stamp set that's in the catalog. So let's see, let's take a, a closer look at all that for you and of course I will have the still shots at the end so be sure to stay tuned for that and let me read you the journaling here. As a young boy in Toledo, Ohio, my dad enjoyed playing and working at his grandparents farm. He and his brother would sit on the horse while my great grandfather sat in the wagon with the reins. The original homestead seen in this picture was built on the corner of Telegraph Road 
and become, became known as Crab's Corners. My great-grandparents eventually moved out of that house and moved into a smaller house with the barn that you see here. The homestead stayed in the family for quite a while and was home to one of their eight children. Eventually, some of the land was purchased by Toledo Scale, but the home stayed in the Crab family for quite some time. So there you have it. I thought this paper was perfect for these pictures to help me document that. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're still with me, please go ahead and don't forget to give that button, um, hit that button to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for the notifications so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. Thanks so much for stopping by with me today. Go out and have a crafty day. Bye friends.